Uh, thank you all for joining me this morning here. My name is Rob. I'm an applications engineer over at Computer Aid Technology. I specialize in printing, scanning, and now I've taken over the Nano Dimension line, uh, specifically their Dragonfly LDM machine. Um, and for our, our guests who will hear this on a recording, uh, good morning, afternoon, or evening, wherever this finds you. So let's jump right in. We're going to talk a little bit about our company. So Computer Ed Technology is one of the oldest SOLIDWORKS companies in the country, started in 1994, and we're still the first SOLIDWORKS reseller in North America. We have offices that reach all the way from Seattle, Washington, down to Louisville, Kentucky, as well as Albuquerque. I am located in Eden Prairie, Minnesota, um, and our headquarter office is Buffalo Grove, Illinois. It's just a real quick look at some of the solutions that we offer. So over on the left, there's some software, some uh, pretty recognizable brands, uh, Desalt Systems and SOLIDWORKS, and then over there, 3D printing. We offer Stratasys, Desktop Metal, and Nano Dimension. Also, Creoform 3D scanning, as well as Roland Mills, and Box Technology Workstations. Cool. So jumping right in, this is a really awesome presentation for me because as the ATI, we haven't really done an official, and I'm doing air quotes, but an official launch of the Dragonfly Pro system. So this is kind of an introductory, but also there are some things that have changed in Nano Dimension Dragonfly that we're excited about. And we're going to be dropping that information into this slideshow just a little bit. So first, let me just tell you about Nano Dimension. This is one of the very first 3D printers that specializes in printing ready to solder, ready to mount, ready to reflow uh, PCBs. The way it does that, for some of you that might be familiar with PolyJet or Object, is the machine does use two different types of materials. So the first one, and in this diagram is the yellow, is a, is a UV cured photopolymer, again, very similar to PolyJet uh, with dielectric properties. And then the other head extrudes a conductive silver nanoparticle ink that is a proprietary um, proprietary resin. This resin is cured um, via heat, so thermal cure. And together they coincide to make a printable PCB. Talk a little bit more about Dragonfly LDM. So the technology, and again, this is where this differs from PolyJet for some of you who are, who are uh, familiar with that. And I apologize in advance that I'm going to be drawing several parallels. It's no coincidence that being an Israeli company, Nano was uh, employed several object and polyjet engineers to help kind of get this machine off the ground. So a lot of the technology is very similar, but one huge difference is that the heads are piezo drop. They are not um, static, so they can be individually tuned. So all 192 heads can have their diameters adjusted on the fly. That helps us control trace width uh, be between layers. So again, two print heads, one for each ink. Our minimum trace layer. So again, um, for those of you who aren't super familiar with electronics or circuit design, the traces would be the actual wires printed on the board where the where the path would flow. Uh, we can go as, as small as 17 micron. And our minimum dielectric layer thickness is about 35. So that would be kind of looking at the board from a side view like a sandwich. It uses both the nano dimension proprietary optimize silver nano nanoparticles and dielectric ink and then we also have pretty good trace connectivity um, as it would pertain to copper tracing and also very similar dielectric constant to fr4 which is essentially what the dielectric material is designed to simulate fr4 um, again for the for the project comparison it feels a lot like vero so rigid somewhat flexible but definitely could be broken in half. So we don't, we don't do that here. So a couple of the very key technologies uh, that I'm going to discuss pretty quickly uh, at the end of this presentation um, and throughout our multi-layer PCBs. Right now, Nano has told us that 26 layers is, has been tested uh, pretty thoroughly, but given the current design guidelines, in theory, they could print, you could print as many layers as would fit into that board. Um, the other thing that's cool is it allows for side contacts and side mounted components. So we really get a, a sense of that real estate all over the board. We're not just using both sides. And also the ability to integrate circuits. So um, to draw an FDM comparison, sometimes an FDM 
on Stratasys, we will pause prints to add things like magnets uh, for jigs or maybe threaded inserts for more complicated parts. So this is very similar, and I'll show you some uh, quick pictures of that in a little bit. We can also do things like printed capacitors, printed RF, so antennas up to 6 gigahertz. We can also do printable battery sockets, coils and sensors, and of course, integrated circuits. So those are kind of the key applications that we're seeing right now through customers. Um, of course, you know, this machine is only eight months old. So, you know, things are going to change rapidly with this company, which we're really excited to be kind of along that same path with them. So here's a few examples of multi-layer PCBs. I'm sure you can all see this. Um, so like I said, up to 26 layers is what they're saying is tested. Um, the maximum Z depth or the Z thickness of these boards is about an eighth of an inch. So we do have plenty of real estate to do some serious testing. It's not, uh, it's not as large as what we're used to seeing in, in traditional 3D printing, but um, we can get about 26 layers into a board. Of course, those of you familiar with 3D printing will know that you know, it kind of follows the same advantage guidelines. So, you know, a quicker turnaround time, the ability to fail fast, um, keeping everything in-house are all, are all very, very important pillars of 3D printing. And that's no different here in Nano Dimension. Another cool thing that, that we dig about this board is that using a drill file, which I'm gonna I'll also explain in a little bit, um, there's no need to drill or, or really post-process the board. Actually, since it is a fully additive system, there is no need, uh, there's no support material, so there's no need for any type of post-processing. And the top signal pads can be set to 50 microns. So in theory, the board could be printed ready to solder um, as soon as you pull it off the substrate. So another huge advantage of 3D printing PCBs versus having them traditionally manufactured from FR4 is that using a route file, which again, for some of you um, who aren't familiar with electronics or circuit board design, a route file is essentially the piece of the Gerber, which is, which is the entire um, kind of batch of files that create a circuit board. The route file is what determines um, somewhat of the shape of the board. So if you can see down here in the corner, these kind of snowflake boards, that's all done by the route file. So it tells the printer exactly how to print that footprint. Um, and these are no different. So we can see how these boards eliminate a lot of real estate of dead space by just controlling the board around the trace files. Now this would be very useful for, let's say um, a video game company who wanted to test uh, a circuit board in a video game controller, rather than having to print or have a, have a traditional PCB manufactured they can simply just add the route file to their nano dimension and the board will be printed in the exact same shape as their controller that allows them to skip all that post processing and be able to mount that component immediately into their test fixture and start testing immediately. So again, this is a, a fully 100% additive process. So it is laying down layer by layer and curing. There's no need for any type of cutting equipment or drilling equipment which again enables us a very wide range of geometries. I'll show you in a little bit, um, we've even seen test parts that will have trace paths that run at a 45 degree angle. Uh, because we have um, a full footprint, or we're, we have a full matrix that we can work in, uh, the, the entire space of the board, that means that no longer are we necessarily going to have to rely on things like vias or blind vias to control trace paths through layers when we can simply just move them at um, different angles. So here's another example of side mounted components. Again, the, the, uh, the word they use here is real estate, and I think that's a great, a great word to use. Um, as you can see in these two, there are components that are soldered onto the side. This is really nice if you need the real estate. So for example, these components, if they were to be mounted, if they, if the traces were to be designed to have these components mounted, on the top of this board that would kind of add some congestion and could add some interference across these traces, which would mean that your little button maybe wouldn't work. So this is another advantage uh, to Nano. We're really excited about um, soldering on the side of PCBs. This is kind of that uh, plug-in module socket that I was telling you. Another, this is kind of demonstrating the, the, the need for um, vias and through holes. So all of these traces would be connected through vias and trace holes. 
Diaz or plated through holes. So no soldering required on this, and this can all be done in-house on the machine. Same thing goes for RF. So we saw a couple RF specs on here, and I have a white sheet on this as well. Um, but basically, the ability to have that RF printed right into the board rather than having to send it out for post-processing is a huge advantage when attempting to keep all of that um, in-house. More information on RF. So we do have slightly better dielectric value than FR4, which is pretty nice, I mean, for that specific application. So we can kind of handle some of those higher frequencies for transmitters and, and things like that. So really quick, another quick example of touch switches. So this would actually utilize the electricity in your body to turn on an LED, which eliminates the need for a button. Um, and you can basically, you know, design, assemble it and, and do that all in, in one very quick shot. For example of our RF, this one was actually used by Harris um, in space. They made an RF, an RF antenna at 5.2 with operation up to six gigahertz on a single printed board. See over here, here's the ground and then the input over here on the left and then the RF output on the right. Another excellent application that we've seen is IoT, so Internet of Things packaging. Uh, this is just one example of where you would want to design and do proof of concept in a single build. Um, when you're building these packs, um, you have things like a battery holder and different types of antennas and things. And then it would require you essentially when you create the board or manufacture the board to then do all the assembly, do all the proof of concept. Um, but in Nano, we can print all of that stuff in, in one piece. So we can do the PCB antenna and the battery holder all in a single part. And then you just have to attach the battery and then you can start testing right away. This is kind of getting into that... Uh, integrated circuit territory where we're actually applying uh, things into the print. So this would be a printed coil for a DC to DC converter. So no external mounted coils, which is pretty neat. So everything just runs into these pins. And also printed capacitors, so kind of a similar process. The, the advantage here is that there's no need for assembly or any type of soldering. And here's that vertical assembly, so we can see in the CAD diagram, this is very similar to just adding an insert. So a four layer PCB into an eight becomes an eight layer PCB by adding those integrated circuits right into the print. So in this case, you would pause the print down here. Just add your integrated circuits as you go so that they're automatically assembled into the board. Cool. I know this is a lot, but we're going to talk about what's new in Nano right now. Now that we have a grasp on what nano dimension can do and what it is, let's talk a little bit about what's coming up with nano. So the latest and greatest from nano is called LDM, which stands for Lights Out Digital Manufacturing Technology, which essentially allows for 24 printing with a few mechanical upgrades. The first one is an auto purge and wiping group stage. So basically the heads jet and clean themselves now. So there's no need to clean the heads um, every eight hours or after every job, the machine will do all of that itself. And um, with that comes an improved algorithm for trace printing and for um, layer stacking. Mechanically has changed on the machine. It's just simply the, uh, the mechanical upgrade to the machine itself. So all of our key technologies have all kind of stayed the same. Um, and none of that has changed. So we are we are very much looking forward to seeing what's next for Nano. Um, we've heard that most of their company right now is a lot of engineers and a lot of chemists, and they are currently working on different types of metallic nanoparticles to um, create new trace. So hopefully things like bronze or copper or um, who knows, could be coming out. They're, they're constantly making improvements. They're constantly coming out with new ideas, new parts, new applications, new processes, and things like that. So on the whole, um, 
we at CTI, CATI are, are very excited to uh, kind of grow with this company and, and see what they're going to do here in, at the end of 2019 and into 2020. Um, and, and, that, and that's a very exciting time for us. That's all I have right now. So I can field any questions that we might have. Uh, one question I do get asked is if the machine, if uh, if boards um, can go through reflow, and the answer is not right now, just due to the the temperature. Um, we've seen that at, at a customer where they attempted it and melted their board at a very very high temperature. But that is something that Nano is working on right now: is creating better um, high temp dielectric materials uh, specifically to be run through reflow. So that the horizon at some point next year. All right, and uh, we got another question for uh, what size and complexity of PCB boards can be printed on the Dragonfly? So the maximum board thickness is one eighth of an inch. And then our, our build volume would be 160 by 160 by three millimeters. So that's the maximum build print size. And as for complexity, as long as you're following, you know, this, this 17 micron, Sorry, the 17 micron trace layer thickness um, is kind of the key to everything is if, if the traces are too close, we can start seeing interference, but also because the traces are being printed uh, via 192 nozzles, there is a danger for a little bit of overspray. And this is another part of that algorithm that I spoke about with LDM specifically. They've tied in a lot better um, a lot better math with the piezos, so that those adjustable diameters, and it keeps that keeps that thickness and, and keeps that minimum trace width um, very tight, which is which is great because you know when you're looking at a, a complicated PCB that has you know several hundred different traces running over the top, it's kind of hard to tell. You know, I wouldn't be able to tell you if something was 17 or 18 microns apart just using my eye. Um, if you can, that'd be awesome. But we have to basically use a microscope to do that. So, so to answer to answer that question, you know, a, as is true with anything in, in additive, uh, the complexity will be limited by the machine. But really, as long as you stay in those design guidelines and you have a good sense of what the application is for that part, I would say that there really isn't a limit to the complexity of the board. I've seen. I've seen a, a few pretty complex prints from Nano, um, and some some used for for specific applications. Some used as just a continuity tester to kind of prove it out. Um, but I would say, yeah, it, it would be it would be limited to to what you can design within those rules as for complexity, and then also given, you know, these build volume specs. Um, is the uh, Dragonfly LDM machine is this uh, office friendly? Or does it have to be put down in a factory or put off in its own room? This is a, a very office friendly machine. Um, it doesn't it doesn't exhaust anything. It doesn't off gas anything, and it really doesn't heat up too much um, compared to you know uh, FDM machines or something that do get pretty hot um, and can be kind of noisy. The machine doesn't. Its axis that moves while it's printing does not actually use. Um, things like chains or pulleys or belts is actually on a magnetic rail, so it's very quiet. Uh, the only thing you need is space because it does have on each side of it. So there's doors all the way around. So you do need some space to move around it, um, and you just need power, basically an Ethernet to to run it. So yeah, I would say it is definitely very office friendly. Uh, we have customers that run them right in the lobby of their of their office with no problem. All right. Well, that looks like all the questions for now. Um, if you have anything else in the future, feel free to contact everybody at CATI, and we'll be happy to help you. Uh, thanks, everybody, for joining. Thanks, everyone.